Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to talk about generative design environment that is in Fusion 360. And um, this is one of the major advantages or benefits of um, Fusion. So here I want to design this simple bracket to put some load on it. And I am preserving four holes in the back of it so I can attach it to the wall. And to do that, I made these four cylinders that are the obstacles or the areas, the volumes that the generative designer should avoid. So there, it should not create any material in this area. And the part that I wanted to definitely be uh, included in the design is this um, part here called preserve. So that uh, uh, basically thin part is the one that i definitely want to have and then the rest of it which is this one this is the start block so you can have it or you can just let uh, fusion decide about it so what you start with is optional whether you want to provide the starting volume or not you can or you might just leave it to fusion to decide but you definitely want to have an area that is preserved that it should be there and some obstacles, the areas that you want to basically avoid. And one thing is the obstacles and the preserve should have no interference. There should be no overlap between them. The other thing is uh, later when we go, I'll show you in the design environment, in the generative design, you want to uh, provide some constraints and some loads so we can calculate some stresses and the stresses will not uh, pass the uh, strength of the material with some safety factor. And so for that, uh, the surfaces that you can apply the constraint on or the loads, they should be a part of the preserve body. You cannot apply the forces or the constraints on the start body or on this obstacle body. The only part that you can apply, the only surfaces that are available are the surfaces of the preserve body, okay? So keep that in mind. So here we created all the separate bodies. And uh, if we went to generative design, then look what I have. So when you bring it in, the first thing you do is basically it asks you what kind of a study do you want? And here I pick this one, a structural component. If it's a fluid uh, analysis, you pick this one. But here I pick the structural one. If you need to go back and edit the model, you can pick that. But let's say right now my model is good. So here is the first part you do. You click on this uh, preserve geometry and then you pick the geometry to be preserved. So here basically I pick that uh, preserve geometry, right? And then similarly, you click on obstacle geometry, and then I picked all of these four red cylinders. Then you go ahead and uh, basically do the starting shape. And for starting, I picked the big body, right? And then if the part you wanted to have X, uh, planes of symmetry, you can add that. So you can say, I want a symmetry plane. And then here, I pick this middle plane here. But if you don't want it, you don't have to select it. And finally, you can have offsets around the obstacles, right? And this is the area that you can uh, also avoid. So you can provide some offsets. And here you see that I also provided some um, offsets around the obstacles of two mils. And these are these kind of bigger cylinders that are not kind of like... Um, pinkish right the color and those are basically the offset regions so here you see that i have my start body i have my um, obstacles these four bodies i have my preserve i have the symmetry plane and so on so all of them are picked and then here you can talk about the objectives of the design manufacturing cap uh, limitations and so on so you go to the design and here you say what is your goal do you want to maximize the stiffness or minimize mass here my goal is to minimize mass then you provide a safety factor and then you can turn on the modal frequency or not so here it's asking that the minimum first mode frequency the minimum uh basically uh, uh frequency of vibrations is 50 hertz for this object 
you can have displacement limits so here you don't want your displacement you have some minimum x y and z displacements global or local and you can have a buckling safety factor as well okay so you can put all of these uh, structural limitations and design limitations on then you can go to manufacturing and allow it to have any mode of manufacturing that you want so for instance let's say the only way you want to make it is additive let's say with the 3d printer then you pick that right or uh, and here you can have z positive or z negative for different uh, basically uh, types of uh, structure right the different types of printers like fdm or uh, uh, sla that the print is done in the positive or negative z direction you can have some overhang angle limits right so you can provide some minimum thickness and so on if it's three axis milling you can again provide some information the minimum tool diameter you can say for instance the minimum tool diameter is 10 mil here but uh if you want to or the head diameter or anything and if you don't uh, know these numbers you probably have to do a best guess and or do you want a two axis cutting do you want to do a casting then what is the minimum thickness what is the draft angle so here is or you can say unrestricted which is basically it can be any so here you put the modes of manufacturing you make sure you pick some material here and then once all of that is done uh, you come here to put the uh, loads on so here you go to structural constraints and you see that the load that i put is on this back plane the uh, constraint so let me show you so if you go here under loads then you can see i have the constraint and you see here this back is fixed for all three directions and then for load here i put this load of um let's see how much it was it was 5000 newton or equivalent to something like 500 something kilogram on the top shelf and then um here i also activated the gravity so the weight of the part is also included and the material i applied was aluminum and uh once the load is all there now you can go here and you can click on pre-check see if it has anything now here it says only one preserved body is specified if this is what you want then you're good and in this case it is for us and then it says two axis cutting does not support preserved bodies if one of the following occurs so you see here it might give you some warning if it's a warning it might be fine but if this goes red that it generates an error then you cannot do anything and if it's green that means everything is set and then you go ahead and click on generate and the generation takes some time to get you some results when it does then under this explore you're going to see these results and here you can see different basically outcomes right the ones that are converged or completed so you can see here for instance a study one a structural outcome four outcome two outcome three and one converged not completed but let's just look at them so if you double click on this one to see this outcome this is one of the outcomes here and this is done with additive manufacturing it gives you the mass of the part it gives you the volume it gives you the minimum safety factor everything is done and basically it added this portion here to uh force it to uh be at minimum 1.2 safety factor because if this extra uh, part was not there to reinforce the top shelf then you will not have that safety factor or the displacement will not be there or the um buckling so here this extra material is added just to uh, satisfy all the conditions now of course you don't want to have something like this manufactured so you can basically export this and draw some sketches and get something close to this which is a little bit more refined okay and i'll show you how to do that but let's say if you want to see the stress on this part here you click on the stress and you can see uh, different stress at different points and you see the stress is either low 
or ideal. As you can see, there is no point that is red and high stress. So you see in these areas that are ideal, so they're good and then low. If everything is low and ideal, you're good. If you see high stress, that means it could not do it, although it should be able to. And then if you want to see which part, which part was the um, basically the preserved geometry, you can click on this and it shows it to you. So you see it is a part of this final design. And then if you want to see the obstacles that should have been avoided, you can see them, right? So your design has no overlap with this. Okay, you can clearly see that. And then if you want to see the uh, initial shape, you can also see that as well. Okay, so you can see everything here. Okay. And the stress, as I told you, you can see the design preview, right? And everything, you can see transparent view. And uh, if you like this design, then you can go ahead and say create. And you can either create a design from this or a mesh. And the good thing about mesh is you can uh, modify the mesh. For design, let me show you if you are creating a design from this. Now, of course, you have to wait until it creates a, a parametric design out of this, right? Hopefully with surfaces that you can modify or draw a sketch over. Okay, so it does that for you. Or as I said, you can create a mesh, okay? Now here, if I go back, I can see the other parts, right? So let's look at this one. And here is the one that is done with three axis milling. This is the other design. And again, you can look at the stress and you see this is quite the thick part and stress is low everywhere. And of course, um, you can see all these other things, right? So clearly, this is the original object. And then this is the obstacle and this is the body to preserve. Okay, so you can see those. And then the uh, two other designs. Let me turn it off. The other ones are basically converged, but doesn't necessarily mean that uh, they are exactly what you want. But you can see that here, this is two axis milling. And remember, in the beginning, it told you that two axes cannot do it. So instead of a bracket, it just made a big cube for you. Okay, so because your mode of manufacturing was not really supportive of this. And this is the casting. So if you want to do just simple casting, this is probably what casting can bring you. Okay, and again, you can see that the preserve region is there. And then the um, areas to avoid the obstacles are also there. Okay, so it generated four designs for you. Again, by no means it means that these designs are perfect or anything, but these are some initial ideas. One other thing you can do is to go here, look at this explore. So here, these are the thumbnail views, but if you go there, or this one actually, this scatter is better. So here it shows you, for instance, here you're looking at mass, right? And you see that this design, which is basically two axis cutting, this is more than 30 kilogram, right? And then this one is 18, which is by uh, casting. Then you go to three axis milling, you're down to 15. And then you go to generate to additive manufacturing, and it's only 2.7 kilogram. Okay, so you see that you can sort it based on mass or you can, let's say, look at max one mice as a stress. Then you see that these three designs are relatively the same. And this one, which was the additive, it has more stress in it. But of course, this is much a smaller part. So still you are good in terms of uh, if you look at the mean safety factor, you see that your additive manufacturing, the minimum safety factor is 6.9, and the other ones are clearly over-designed. Look at that, 257, this one is 433, and this one is 800. Clearly over-designed and uh, not useful. And uh, you can look at the other, uh, basically, factors. And here, you can limit your designs to which one. Let's say any mass that is more than... 10 kilogram, I don't want it. So if that's the case, 
and you limit it, then it's going to filter out the other ones that don't match this criteria. And you see the only one that you have is the additive manufacturing. Okay, but if up to, let's say, 17 kilogram is uh, acceptable to you, then you can also look at what? You can also look at the uh, 3D uh, milling. Okay, so you can use these uh, sliders. And you can look at that. And then also you can look at the materials that were chosen, the manufacturing methods and everything. So you can do all of that and you can then see a table view. And it also gives you a recommendation for which one is recommended. And you clearly see that the additive is 95% recommended because the mass of it is much less than the other one. This um, three axis is only 26% uh, recommended and the two others did not complete. They only converged. So it's not even recommending those two for you. Okay. And of course, you can export some of the results here the outcomes to a CSV file. And again, remember that you can create parts out of this. And so you can go back and you can basically what you can look at the um, exported file. So you see here, let's see. I assume one of them is now exported, right? So if I go back here, I should be able to see that one of them was uh, exported, and I guess it was this guy, right? So this one, the design is ready. Click to continue. Let's open the design. So we should be able to see the final part, let's see, there we go. And you see it is made as a surface. So if you go to uh, basically surfaces, you should be able to control that. Or if you go to the forms, these are TSP lines, so you should be able to control it. Or you can save it as a mesh and then change the mesh. So you see here, it created a part out of that for you. Okay, so this is a summary of basically generative shape design environment and what it can do for you. Of course, um, it does not really mean that uh, this is going to replace humans, but it can give you some initial ideas and generate some shapes for you and then you can start from your design from what you have here and maybe make it more um, attractive more interesting and once your design is final you still have to reapply all of these constraints and everything and make sure that the static analysis in that case is still acceptable okay so after you modify the generated design you have to rerun the test on it and and make sure that in terms of software, it is good. So hopefully this video was useful to you. You learned something and I'm going to see you in the next video. Thank you.